Hello everyone. Are you ready for another story with joy of reading? Under the microscope. That is going to be today's story. The author of the story is C.G. Salamander. And the illustrator is Ipsa Jane. And the publisher of this book is Pratham Books. From the pond. So the title of the story is Under the Microscope. What is a microscope? Microscope is a device that enlarges even small, tiny things that we cannot see through our eyes. So it makes it into large images so that we can see. So for that, what are they doing? They're going to a pond and collecting some water as a sample to see under the microscope. To the lab. So the water that they have taken from the pond, now they've taken it to a lab or a laboratory. What is a laboratory? A lab is a place where you can test things. Where have we heard about a lab before? You would have heard for testing your blood or to take a scan or all those things, you go to a lab. But a lab is not just for those things. You can test other things like you can even test your water. So here they are taking it to a lab so that they can see it under a microscope. Under the microscope. Now the sample that they have taken from the pond that they've take, brought to a lab is now kept under a microscope. Now let's see what they found when they saw under the microscope. Hydra's somersault. So this is where you can see through the microscope. What are they able to see? This is called a hydra. Look at it. It looks like a plant, right? It has these tentacles at the top. These are called hydras. And what are they doing? They're doing something called a somersault. What is a somersault? You would have seen in circus where people do palti, rotating back to front or front to back. That's called a somersault. Diatoms drift. Those were the hydras. Now these smaller ones are called diatoms. And they drift. Drift is just move in the water. The current will take the diatoms with the flow of the water. Euglenas twist and turn. These are euglenas. Euglenas, they twist and turn like this. Euglenas and diatoms are unicellular organisms. Uni means one. Cellular means cell. They have only one cell. A cell is a, a unit of any living thing. It could be a plant or an animal. For instance, in our body, we are made up of millions of cells. But these are made up of only one cell. The euglenas and diatoms. Both of them have only one cell. Whereas hydras are made up of more cells. So they are multicellular. Under the microscope. These we are still seeing under the microscope. What else can we see? Planarias glide. These are called planarias. Look at them. They are gliding, moving very smoothly without making any noise or anything. Moving very gently. Those are called gliding. These are planarias. Amoebas crawl. These are also unicellular or single cell organisms, creatures. What, what are they doing? They are crawling. They are moving very slowly. You would have seen babies crawling, right? They move slowly. Before they walk, they would crawl like this. So the uh, amoebas are also crawling, moving very slowly. Copepods swim. These are called copepods and they swim around. 
still we are seeing under the microscope. Look at it. This is the microscope. Tardigrades stroll. These are called tardigrades or water bears. They look like small bears. They're very tiny. Look at them. They look like bears moving. Here you can see that they look like a bear. Stroll moving slowly again. Paramecia spiral. So these are paramecia. These are also single celled creatures. How do they go? They go like a coil. You would have seen like a coil, right? That's called a spiral. It can go like this. It spirals. Cyanobacteria stay still under the microscope. These are called cyanobacteria. It's not one bacteria. Bacteria is also single celled. These are cyanobacteria strands. Each of it is made up of number of bacteria joined together. And they just stay still. They don't move there. Microbes are everywhere. Hydras look like plants. Tardigrades walk like tiny bears. And amoebas are shapeshifters. But what they have in common is that they are all microbes tiny creatures that live all around us. From deep under the earth to far up in the sky, microbes are everywhere. They live in the freezing cold and in the bubbling heat. They live in food, waste, rocks, trees, soil, and even you and me. So how many microbes live around us? A drop of water from a pond will have hundreds and hundreds of these tiny creatures. But to look at them, we will need to use a microscope. A microscope is a device used to enlarge very small things that can't be seen with the naked eye. So what are these tiny creatures that we saw earlier? They are called microbes. They live all around us. We saw that the hydras look like plants and the tardigrades, they are like tiny bears. And the amoebas are shapeshifters. What are shapeshifters? Shapeshifters they can change the shape, the physical shape of their body. So amoebas can change. If it is like this, it can become like this or make it smaller or enlarge it in one place. So they can change the shape of their body. So and where are they found? They are found everywhere under deep under the earth. Also, you can find them up in the sky. Also, you can find them. You can find it around us, in the water, in the air. You can find it in the waste, in the rocks, in the soil. Everywhere you will find microbes everywhere. And in a drop of uh, water, one drop, one small drop, you will have hundreds and hundreds of these small tiny creatures called microbes. And to see them nicely and clearly, what do we need? We need a a microscope. That's a device that is used to make these tiny creatures look like large ones so that you can, we can easily see. So they enlarge these small things so that we can see it easily. Let's take a closer look. Hydras can grow back their lost body parts and almost never die of old age. If you cut a planaria into two, each piece will develop into an individual planaria. Euglenas, like plants, can make their own food through photosynthesis. Diatoms produce 
25 to 40 percent of the air we breathe. Amoebas can change their shapes. Sometimes they do this to trap food. So some of the special things about the creatures or the microbes that we saw are hydras, what they can do, even if it is cut or injured, it can grow back its body parts easily and they don't die of old age. How about planarias? Planarias, if you cut them into two also, each one becomes a separate planaria. What's special about a euglena? Euglenas, like plants, how do plants make food? They make food by photosynthesis. The same way, euglenas can also make their own food through photosynthesis. Diatoms, diatoms are very important to us. What do they do? They produce a large percentage of the air that we breathe. Amoebas, we saw that they can change their shape. A single coke pod can eat thousands of diatoms in just 24 hours. Tardigrades can survive in the most extreme conditions like inside a volcano or in outer space. Paramecia swim really fast and can cover a distance of four times their length in a second. Cyanobacteria have been around for a very long time and have been found in fossils that are over a billion years old. So some of the other creatures we saw, the cope pod that we saw, each cope pod can eat thousands of diatoms in one day. These tardigrades, what's special about the tardigrades? They can survive, they can live in extreme conditions. What extreme conditions? They can live even inside a volcano. Volcano is so hot, so, so hot. You cannot even live there, but these tardigrades can live there. They can live in outer space as well. Paramecia. Paramecia, what is special about them? They are such fast swimmers. Within one second, like this, they can swim four times their length. If their length is this much, four times that length, they can swim. And what's special about cyanobacteria? They are so old. They have been found in fossils that are billions of years old. What are fossils? They are the remains or impressions of either plants or animals that lived long time back, millions of years back. So much so that they have all become like a rock or a stone. That's called a fossil. Let us look at some of the difficult words in today's story. Somersault, a movement in which a person turns forward or backward in a complete revolution or tumbling head over heels. Look at this picture. You can see that they're doing a somersault. Shape shifters, ability to change the physical shape at will. Spiral, to rise and fall in a coiled course. Stroll, a slow walk. Crawl, to move very slowly. Glide, to move smoothly without noise or effort. Drift, carried along by a current of water or air. Try these questions. What is this story about? Hydra and planaria grow up to 20 to 30 millimeters. Can you see them with your naked eyes? Why do you need a microscope? There are two main types of tiny creatures that we think about when we say microbes. What are those? These two tiny creatures are there all around us. I hope you really liked today's story. I enjoyed it. Till next time. Bye.